everyone so I bought myself a little radio kit because I like it that's why it's supposed to be build your own working FM radio and it's supposed to have no soldering or anything like that it's just a little kit here as you can see okay so let's get on with it Oh, so it's using the whole box like this has a radio which is lovely I think really nice it's got his little speaker there quite interesting actually I like this a few uh, capacitors and stuff and obviously the manual very simple radio as you can see LM386 chip Okay, let's start building this. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to put this uh, LM386 in there. This capacitor of 100 microfarad and this resistor of 1k ohm, which is brown, black and red. So I've already put uh, the chip in and let me just... The... Um, Little, little notch there is pointing that way like this one here like this one here this is the circuit diagram here as you can see pin 5 is going to positive of the capacitor and then the other side is going to the positive of the speaker and that 100 microfarad that's 100 microfarad and then this is going to 1k resistor which should be going to number 4 as well I've connected the battery and the speaker there just want to show you ok so what we got here is we got this uh, connected here but Pin 5 goes to the positive of the 100 microfarad and the negative comes out on this side here which goes to the speaker uh, which is going to the spe positive speaker and the negative speaker is coming to pin 4 also the resistors on pin 4 which is coming out here and the negative from the resistor is going there we'll put a, a link between there and there which is tall to do also this here is just to hold these wires down Okay, so guys, um, with the 1K resistor and this capacitor, if I put the battery on here, it makes a little sound, a little clicking sound. Okay, but what they say is if you put an input of 2 and 3, you should get a different signal. That's, that's 2, that's 3. And the reason why is because you put in a small voltage on that input. And you're applying some voltage. Yeah, so that's that. This is the other pins. This is the V out. This is the input positive. This is the ground. Now we put in a 10k ohm resistor from pin 3, the output pin 3, up to the speaker there. That is a 10k from there to pin 3. This is obviously LM386 chip. What happens is that it turns the amplifier into a sound generator and the non-inverting 
input at pin 3, so non inverting of the LM386 is connected via a resistor of the output. That one there did. And when we put this uh, battery in, this proves it. So this proves that the amplifier is working fine. This, this this tells us the amplifier is attached correctly and works properly. The protective 1K, which is here, they say that um, you don't really need it any longer. When you bypass it with a piece of wire or remove it for a test, the rattling noise becomes very loud. So we're going to just put a little little pin um, bypass this resistor. We're going to short it in other words. So here it is, I've shortened the resistor because it says, because it's working properly, we can bypass this safety resistor. So let's see what happens then. It's supposed to be louder. That's fine. Okay guys, we're doing this circuit here. See pin 3 and pin 4 is grounded. Okay. Um, and... Uh, this is the 100 nanofarad. Unfortunately, I've dropped it somewhere and I can't find it. So I'll put some something else in until I can get a uh, 100 nanofarad later. So we're putting this capacitor in here. And we, and we took out the 1K and we're replacing that. So here we are. Here it is, um, if you can see. Okay, so we took the capacitor out here, so we put a, a link there. This is pin 3 and 4, which is... Um, put over here but well, there's your nanofarad and one one side is empty it's not touching anything at all this one obviously is connected and this is your new capacitor going from pin 4 to pin 6 so this is what it looks like everything's connected so what they say if you still get a humming Check in your amplifiers. Here we go. When you touch, when you, sorry, when you touch uh, the capacitor, so we're getting some kind. I don't know if you can hear this. Very low noise. This guy is a voltage regulator. Is HT7530, which is this one here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like a transistor, but it's a regulate, voltage regulator. Okay, so it says here uh, three legs are not interchangeable. The middle leg is the input, it connects to the positive terminal of the 9 volt battery, and the output, i.e., the right pin, then provides suitable 3 volt three voltage and the other one is to the negative so obviously the middle pin and this pin here is, is say uh, output so I'm gonna have to measure that I don't want to uh, uh, ruin my uh, my uh, chip which is basically this chip here this is gonna go in now checking the voltage regulator which is this thing here um, and I put this there, this side, it's three, three, um, I don't know if you can see, three volts, it, it, it is giving three volts, which is good, right, to clarify what I've done up till now, so I put um, this resistor here, which is, I think it's 1K, yeah, and then this resistor here, which is 100 ohms, and this resistor here is 10K, the voltage regulator, the middle, middle uh, wire goes there and the other two go that way. And you can see that this is a 3 volt which will go into here. Um, I um, put that bridge there and bridge across there. And that should be it. So here it is connected. Uh, all the wires are connected up nicely there. Okay guys, they said that you could randomly get something from the 
antenna here. It's, it hasn't got a tuner in yet, but until, until we get put tuner in, we won't really know. But I'm not getting nothing. So I've tried it. So you can even touch the uh, the S and R pins, which is this one here and this one here. Nothing's happening there either. So no, we're not getting nothing. So we're going to continue on. Everything else is connected. Well, guys, I know that this capacitor wasn't the correct one. It wasn't the 104. So I added another one of them So in parallel because in parallel um, it can increase the capacitance. So I'm going to try this now and see what happens. Okay. Well, there you go, guys. It's working. Radio is, radio is working. I don't want to leave it on too long, obviously, because of... Um, Copyright issue with uh, YouTube. There you go. So if I see, see if I can change anything by touching these here. No, I can't change nothing. So <coughs> there you go, guys. Oh, no, as I move the aerial, get in different stations. Okay, guys, so what they're saying here. Um, is that you make a push button so got one here push button and you connect it to this end here and it changes the channel when we get to the end you've got to have a reset reset wire which i haven't i haven't connected at the moment but hey here we go So that's at the end now so stop scanning and you have to reset it to rescan it again just interesting facts there so here we go trying to explain this so this is 100 ohms 10k 220k and 1k so to take it out of here where it was before okay the way it's wired up is um, this part here goes there, that goes there, obviously that goes there. The green one is to the battery. This orange one goes to the negative, which is still here, really. And uh, th this one here, I think it's a purple one of mine, purple one of mine goes right here to this um capacitor input and this one here goes all the way to number five cutting from that side of this pin here that's the best way I can explain that so here we go oh the antenna by the way is a loop from there to there which is number four of the pin here that's a loop there's your antenna from there to there is your loop Okay, so this is all connected up now, and um, for the sake of copyright, I shall turn it on and off kind of thing. Okay, here we go. It's quite loud, right? And then... It changes channels. Changes channels. So it's all working. So I'm going to mount it into the box here. The speaker will go there. The two pods will go there. Then the area has to go out those two holes. And then it looks something like this. Alright. So guys, this is the final look inside. They're in. Everything's done. I found my capacitor, by the way. It was stuck on here. Can you believe it? From inside. Didn't see. So I, put, I replaced it. And I made a little battery compartment to just hold it there. Like that. While, while this is closed. So it doesn't move around. Flip around everywhere. So that's it. Let's hope it works now. Let me close this. There you go. And... The aerial is there, comes out of there. 
That's the switch. That's it guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and leave a comment what you think about it. I think it's quite good. It was expensive, I think, because 22 pounds for that was expensive. But when I looked inside of this, I realized that a lot of work's gone into it and, and it's worth well worth the money, I think, anyway. So, 